today on X-Play. I roll into a ball and cry because that's how Metroid Dread makes me feel. Plus, we give the developers of Shovel Knight feedback they didn't ask for or need. It's game time. Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to X-Play. I feel like I've waited 15 years to say that. And 15 years is just about how long the developers of Metroid Dread have been waiting to say, here, play it, it's done. Can we go to sleep now? Look, many gamers have held Metroid Dread as a return to form. Meaning it didn't sell any copies and put the franchise back into hibernation? What? That's what Metroid games do. I don't make the rules. I feel like you've been hanging out with Sessler too much, so here's our review of Metroid Dread. Brace for impact. In Metroid Dread, the first 2D installation in quite some time, and the first Metroid game in three console generations, our bounty hunter hero finds herself on the remote planet ZDR after the events of Metroid Fusion stripped her of her abilities and paired up against seven terrifying hacked Emmy robots, which really help rev up the tension as promised in the name. The game takes care to build an environment that makes you feel isolated, alone, and cranks up the sense of urgency. Kind of like running to the bathroom at night over a cold tile floor. As I mentioned before, this is the first new Metroid game in three console generations, so fans have been eager to see how the game would play on a console like the Switch. I think it's aggressively just okay when it's played in handheld mode, but this really does work much better once it's on a TV. It being originally developed for the Nintendo DS, I can't imagine that having been all that pleasant on that device either. Because the controls are so deeply important to how you play in a Metroid game, because memorizing a sequence is integral to boss battles. Well, the controls are smooth, but still, countering feels a beat off. I meant beat off like a timing thing, so stop giggling. While not new to the series by any stretch, the boss battles do take on more frequency and prominence in Metroid Dread. Much has been made about their difficulty, but they all feel designed so discreetly from the overall experience that, with enough attention, they are manageable and fairly fun, although death is pretty much required as you establish the patterns and phases. There are those boss battles that overstay their welcome, as with many enemies in the game, but overall, they were a high point and an indicator that something new was entering your arsenal at the conclusion. Speaking of combat, boy, do the non-boss regular enemies just pummel the ever-living crud out of you. The majority of the combat in the game is exactly what you would expect. Strange things, both airborne and terrestrial, that should be shot. What is curious is how much you need to shoot most of them to make them go away. Visually, it looks odd that a fleshy flying stingray thingamajig takes this many shots to go down. It's once again not a huge hardship, but one more thing that feels like more for its own sake, like truffle oil on fries or another Wes Anderson movie. Much more forethought could put into taking care to include a lot of quality of life adjustments. As this is a Metroid game, an inordinate amount of time will be spent on your map to discern doors and other access points to further your exploration. The map itself is as visually easy to discern as the Paris subway map, which itself looks like it was designed by the French like a hostile riddle for tourists seeking to take yet another photo in which they look like they're holding the Eiffel Tower in their hands. While chromatically sensible, the visual similarity between door types makes a useful quick glance impossible and even closer zoomed in examinations will easily lead you to areas with no current outlet or just the plain wrong direction. As always, there's no attempt by the game to identify nor nudge you in the correct direction. Hours worth of dithering as you flip back and forth from map to game is celebrated by some as honoring the grand legacy of the franchise, but even the simple option to isolate just one type of door would have mitigated the impulse to jump in a time machine and eviscerate Thomas Cook. Because this is going on the internet, this is my reminder that I'm a human person with opinions that might differ from other reviewers out there, and maybe even you at home, because we all consume media differently. <gasps> I understand tradition for the sake of tradition, there's comfort in it, but also that doesn't always fare well in the long run. Just look at how it worked out for Tevya and Fiddler on the Roof, or dudes that tuck their t-shirts into their jeans under the impression that it's not at all dorky as heck. I love gaming because it bucks storytelling tradition. Many of the elements that we tend to regard as parts of coveted legacy are that way because of initial technical limitations that do not exist in 2021. But once you do arrive at both your and Dread's intended destination, it's possible to still think you shouldn't be there, with the overuse of yet another tired trope of the franchise, the Hidden Passage. 
the most egregious use of this Paleolithic design canard comes at the beginning of the second region of the map. Just as you exit an area, both normal exits lead to rooms that are superheated and you die. Well, my first instinct, because it's a Metroid game, was to return to the previous region and retraverse it for God knows how long, looking for the suit that would allow me to proceed. Lo and behold, if I only shot at the rocky wall in the elevator chamber, I would have found that exit and proceeded on to the next grand exhalation when the game grinds to a complete halt. Of course, I forgot how fun it is because tradition, you know, like that guy pinching your ass every St. Patrick's Day. You know, the most annoying guy in your office every year. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Larry. Although the game does get its hooks in you as you start acquiring more skills and beams. The Emmy sequences, which involve stealth avoidance and an eventual confrontation, provide a distinct, if an unremarkable break from the rest of the game. Similar to the Xenomorph in Alien Isolation or the Nemesis in Resident Evil, they hunt you and take you out upon contact in short order. And while novel for the series, it's a convention that holds little surprises. You get caught, you die, start over. It can prove tense and exciting the first couple of times, but the device quickly wears thin as every sequence plays pretty much the same. As with many things in Dread, it does manage to slow things down to a turgid crawl in a game that isn't too expedient to begin with. And were it excised, it's hard to imagine that one-hit kill stealth sequences would be identified as the element the game needs. Look, it's not that the cumulative effect of these annoyances make the game that onerous in its difficulty, but they sap the game of flow and pleasure with syncopated reliability. It's like having a good meal, but the server swings by to kick you in the nards every 10 minutes. Was the meal really that great at that point? That awesome feeling of getting a new ability and knowing that the itch of those inaccessible regions is going to get scratched can be short-circuited in short order, which sets up a lurching cadence to the gameplay that just falls short. There's a lot to admire in Dread, but I can't say that any of it really amounted to long stretches of pleasure. Even in decidedly challenging games like Souls titles, you know where to go. In Hollow Knight, you have multiple directions to quest and currency to collect for upgrades. Ori lets you know which general direction to go and doesn't de-incentivize going off the path. Metroid is fundamentally a linear game as far as progression goes, but seems to be in denial of its nature by grinding that progression to a crawl with multiple elements that give the impression of a grander game than it actually is. I've made little secret of my strong distaste of utilizing the guise of lore and tradition as a reflexive smokescreen for questionable design decisions and the unquestioning fealty of fanaticism. Just because you dump in your pants on Tuesday and no one made a comment doesn't mean it's a good idea to do it in Temple on the Sabbath as well. I'm not going to publicly question whether someone's like or dislike of a game, or just about anything for that matter, is anything short of sincere. There are genuine lovers of the Metroid franchise, and that fandom is valid. But to hold this series as sacrosanct and delegitimized criticism about the unnecessary, uninspired, and ultimately unsatisfying implementations of ideas from 25 years ago isn't doing anyone any favors here. I have great affection for the Metroid series, but not because it paints by the numbers like it did when developers were still trying to get their heads wrapped around the idea of games being played at home after a single purchase rather than for quarters. I hope that Metroid Prime 4 is actually being made in earnest. I'd love to see the handheld versions available to play on my Switch, but that still doesn't mean I'm going to applaud this installment of the franchise like Grandma Thanksgiving because she didn't go on a three-hour rant about how 5G is giving frogs human ears or how vaccines are hypnotizing her grandkids into hating her. But sadly, in a disappointing collect-them-all pursuit of misplaced nostalgia massaging, many creaky and tired elements that are present in older Metroids are celebrated and peppered through like so many typos on an internet rant. While it has and will still continue to elicit squeals of glee from David Hayes, who thrive on franchise, it's tough to think this 14 years late installment will make the case for them. I get the feeling that if Adam could have blasted Metroid Dread out of an airlock, he would have. Yeah, Sessler is unforgiving and cold. Like the studio, it's actually freezing in here. But Gerard, the completionist, I'd categorize him as warm and fuzzy. Which is why we put them in a cage and force them to debate Metroid. Look, old man Sessler and diehard Metroid fan Gerard go head to head right after this break to decide the fate of the universe. Stick around to see who wins. If you really want to win this,
minutes ago and we were killed immediately. That's my bad. Yeah, GG's though. Welcome back to X-Play. I see the audience backtracked all the way across the map to get the power up that ends commercial breaks. I hope they found the armor upgrade too because shrapnel's about to start flying. Because next, one man loves Metroid, one man loves Metamucil. Cecil debates Gerard about whether Metroid Dread is a masterpiece or disaster piece. Check it out. I really did want to bring in someone who I deeply respect uh, to get uh, a, a, another perspective on Metroid Dread, and that's why I am so happy to welcome my good friend, Gerard. Adam, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, because I've, I've, I'm putting this game behind me right now. Uh, <laughs> now, let's get to the nuts and bolts of this. Um, yeah. So, where do you put this in the pantheon of, of, of Metroid games, and, 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 and what is it that, it that connects with you so strongly? Oh man, uh, this is where things are gonna get real crazy real quick. This, this has, if, if my nostalgia wasn't as strong as it was for Super Metroid, this would be my my favorite absolute number one top Metroid game of all time. Um, this game is so important to the Metroid community, to the Nintendo fans out there, uh, because Nintendo uh, has treated the Metroid franchise uh, pretty roughly. The fact that you know there's only been um, five to six true Metroid uh, main 2D lines versus the probably at this point near 40 to 50 Mario games that exist in the Pantheon, whether he's playing sports or, you know, playing party games, uh, Metroid really as a franchise has, has kind of been left in the dark. And so Metroid Dread means so much to so many people, including yours truly. Uh, I grew up playing a lot of Super Metroid over and over again. I speedrun it casually on, on my Twitch page. And, uh, you know, to me, this is exactly what the doctor ordered in terms of, of difficulty, in terms of of exploration and and really tone is the biggest thing this the the dreading the, the dread aspect of the game uh could not be any more higher than it has been in previous uh metroid titles now are are are, are, are you gleaning that sense of dread just from the emmy itself or sort of like greater concerns within the world of of metroid dread i think the emmys are half of it and i think the other half is is the the overarching uh lore aspect that's kind of baked into Metroid Dread. Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's. I think it's safe to say that um, out of all of the Metroid titles, uh, most of them don't have lore baked into a lot of what you see. I say the Prime series has the most lore written into it from start to finish. Uh, but this being the, the you know a, a solid 2D entry for the Metroid franchise, uh, as you get closer and closer towards the end. Uh, the lore box just opens up and it, it starts to piece together a lot of Samus's history throughout the last six titles. And you you start to kind of see, uh, in essence, what it's like to have everything make sense when otherwise there's no text boxes or, or dialogue or characters that speak in almost most of the Metroid franchise. Obviously, yeah, you're right. Nintendo has not shown a ton of love to the Metroid series. And one thing that I don't think I was as keenly aware of is it never really sold that good for something that clearly has a very passionate base. Um, as, and, and when you're talking here about the degree of lore, obviously, you know, the, I don't know if I would ever term the game that difficult insofar as I found it just kind of annoying. Uh, and it, it, it didn't seem to want me to finish it. Uh, but obviously, there are elements of that that are very, very true to, like, Metro going back to the first game on the NES. Um, I mean, do you see this as a game, though, that's actually going to attract a larger audience? It's selling well, but are people 
playing it. Yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny because I'm working on my own piece right now, um, which might even be out before this. But either way, uh, something that I talked about deeply in, in that, and I feel is very true, is that as a huge Metroid guy who has played all of them, who's experienced them, who speed runs them, who eats, sleeps, and breathes Metroid, the first thing kept coming into my mind when I was playing it was accessibility is not great for newcomers to the franchise. There's not a lot of explanation of what happened in the previous Metroid titles other than Fusion, which is actually pretty decent considering um, what happens in Fusion. But you look at, you know, if you're someone who's never played a Metroid game at all, it, it holds your hands in some areas. In other hands, it says, just go and figure it out. And I'm, I'm going to be a little more blunt on this one. I, 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 I think it holds its hands in two instances I can think of very clearly. And mostly the other time it takes kind of a steaming poop in your hand rather than assisting well, well, you. Well, it, it just... I mean, yeah. just... I mean in, in the beginning of that second area, it's the fact that you have to shoot out a wall to progress because you can't go either way because they're they're, they're superheated. Mm -hmm. um, I myself, I actually know other people where this happened as well. Because it's a Metro game, I, I'm like, uh, I'm going to go look for a suit that handles heat. Mm -hmm. And spent like another hour and a half, two hours, um, and 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 that's been you know where where I really found the stopper with the game is that not so much oh I need hand holding it's that you know I need to kind of spend my time wisely. I, I guess what I've what I've been hitting on is I, I, I get the idea that but Metroid has always been like this, and I don't know if that. I don't know if that's a good excuse to create an experience that I think is going to be so adverse to the majority of people playing it, or if that's really going to help the franchise in the long run. This is, and this is, can sound really weird, this is the most accessible Metroid has ever been, and that's saying a lot considering the moments that you've had when you've been stuck in a certain room or, or, or stuck in a certain boss, because uh, I guess I'll say it was a lot harder when we were kids, it was a lot harder in other yeah. titles. Oh, no, 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 no. You're, 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 you're right. I think why I sometimes get frustrated is that we're applauding the game for being contemporary with like 10 to 12 years ago. The franchise seems to be cut such slack when there are Metroidvanias like 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 Ori or, or, or even Dark Souls where I don't think you get lost. You just don't, you don't know if it's smart to go in a certain direction. Or even something which I loved like Hollow Knight where you, you really get the sense that you can go in multiple directions and at least improve your character, where Metroid is such a linear game and they're employing such archaic sensibilities in the design and allowing you to progress, unless you're so well attuned to exactly that, uh, it's just, it, there's just no pacing. It's, it's like, I get thrilled when I can finally open up a certain type of door, and within just a matter of moments, I'm like, oh, okay, hold on, I'm at another stopper. It's like this, yes, I'm very, I have strong memories of this being kind of the case a long time ago, but I think I only enjoyed it back then because there was nothing else. I mean, that's actually how games were designed. Sure. I think something that, that people aren't discussing or really thinking about, and, and maybe this is, this is something for you to kind of chew on too as we talk about this, is that the term Metroidvania was born out of the chaos of games combining the aspects of progression via Metroid and the explosiveness of expansiveness of, of Castlevania when it came to the Symphony of the Night model. And so when you have a return to form, when a franchise like Metroid, who hasn't made a new game in nearly two decades uh, in, in this same kind of sandbox environment, how does that game's identity stick to what its core is? And I think by making it that difficult, by, by, by making those walls present, it's reminding you that, yes, this is a Metroid title. It's not a Metroidvania-esque title that has kind of taken over the, the landscape of what games are. And not that that deserves a pass, not that it deserves necessarily an easier way to consume it, but what it does do is that it does solidify its choices a little more concretely versus something like Hollow Knight or The Messenger, where those games are so much more, despite you know the difficulty and scale for Hollow Knight, uh, those games are so much more accessible for new players to come in, to learn the combat, to to progress. And, and Metroid itself, specifically with Metroid Dread, one thing that I had a problem with that I loved, but was, you know, made me realize how difficult Metroid games are, and we get we forget how hard they are, not so much in difficulty of bossing and, and bosses and enemies, but just in overall how to play and, and the skill it takes to play is by the time you're done playing, 
and you have every every power up, every asset, everything, you're using every single button on the Switch Joy-Cons and Pro Controller in, in conjunction and simply changing the button format on how you're holding it changes the game entirely and how and to how Samus functions. And so to me, this this is a game that's just not apologizing for what it is, but it's sticking a flag in the ground and going, hey, we started this revolution. This is our genre. This is our, our standpoint. And we're going to stick to our own identity. And I, I, I applaud and respect that stance. At the same time, I don't think that if you've ever played a, if you've never played a Metroid game before, this is going to be a rough experience. This game has paved the way or, for, for or, so many Or people. you can just not play and make it be oh. known to Nintendo that it's not worth your time. I, I mean, <laughs> Which is kind of... <laughs> yeah, you, you could also not see The Godfather. You could also not see The Matrix. But, yeah, like... See, I mean, I still... I, I, I guess the thing is I just can't see Metroid Dread on that level. I mean, I... I, I I, I, I guess the thing is, and what you described, I get it. Obviously, you know where I feel about that good. Sure. Uh, is is that it's just it's so regressive. That's why I love this franchise. I love how difficult it is. I love how how it makes me have to think so difficult, you know, so much more outside of the box than I normally would. And that's because I grew up playing Metroid the way that it's been. Right? It's the tools and the toys that I've known to use. Um, but if you aren't familiar with it, it's a different experience. And how, and that's that's again. I, I have to go back to game identity, right? You have to stick your your flag in the ground and say this is what this is. And if people don't get it, people don't get it. And if they don't like it, that's okay. And we have to have. Oh yeah, that, no, no, that, with that that is yes. It's it's like just yes. <laughs> You're absolutely. Right. I'm never gonna fault someone for saying I like something or question their their mindset. I think that's why when I say I don't like something, it's like well, if you listen to the Lord. It's like, yeah, I still don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and opinions are um, opinions. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. Have, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Gerard, well, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, you have definitely illuminated it. I do not think this is the last game that you and I are going to see very, very differently on. Uh, and I can say with all, all honesty, I'm actually really looking forward to that because uh, I, I love alternative games, uh, especially yours. So thank you. Thank you. I'm excited to to get into this discourse once again about a game that you and I both love and hate. It's nice to see two people who can hear our differences of opinion in a calm manner, which is the exact opposite of how things usually go down on the internet. So we thought it would be funny to comb through the depth of Steam user reviews to help give the makers of Shovel Knight some developer feedback. Let's see how it goes right after the break. Good luck, fellas. We're arming basket bot with a handful of infants and we're gonna see who can catch the most. Avali is in fact going first, thank you, Will. Basket bot, do your dirtiest. Okay, baby one, right into the clutches oh, of Avali. That's a good catch. Okay, that's it. I only had one baby to catch? That's pretty good. Wait, what? That's cheap. Damn. Oh, baby. What? No, baby. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is the car alarm going off? The baby hit the car window. Oh, yeah. I hate to see it. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, yeah. Will, what happened out there? What, what? I missed a lot. We got a lot of dead babies out here, Kevin. Oh, oh no. Man. You hate to see it, Will. I can smell the, the plastic baby heads melting against the asphalt right now. Obelie, you monster. <laughs> On your buttons. Get set. Oh, yeah. Baby one, no Ooh, problem. Keeping his eyes on the window, tucking the baby beneath the armpit. Yep. Oh, you oh, got one up the oh, dash no. That one's tough. <laughs> you hate to see it. <laughs> this one could cinch it right here on the final baby. Out the window, William Jefferson. Will he win? Down to the bay. 
That's it, that's it, success! Success! Yeah. For William Snefferson, I'm even disbelief. The play was dead, and now the baby is too. Wow. That's content, friends. That is content. That's not fatherly behavior! It is, it is for here. The judges are saying that Will won it, absolutely. Oh, okay, and wow, just, okay, they, okay. Babies are bouncing off the glass. See if you can get one in. Oh, no! Come on, Will. Let's see if we can make this happen. Here it comes. Whipping it. Oh! 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 He caught it by the foot! And back to the foam pit it goes. All right. <laughs>